Hello, my beautiful audience, ladies and gentlemen, canines, felines, goldfish, or whatever type of critter or company you keep in your home office with you slash work vehicle. Welcome to the show. And this is a little bit of a shop talk mini episode on a topic that I've been thinking a lot about lately. And we're going to start to do more of these kind of short, quick mini episodes here and there. But today, I am want to talk about this model called Jahari's Window and what it means in terms of personal growth for leaders and really everybody. So Jahari's Window is a concept, a model that... Us at Nash Consulting like to start every workshop off discussing. It's a model that I think really paves the way for the rest of the work that we're going to do in those workshops, especially when we're working on developing leadership teams. Okay, so here's a little bit about Jahari's window. You know, first off, a little background, you know, if if it, this is going to bore you, well, too bad. But uh, for those that like to get into the nitty-gritty details, uh, the Jahari's window model was actually developed in 1955 by a couple of psychologists, Joseph Luft and Henry Ingram. And the idea was to help them understand group dynamics and individual self-growth of the clients that they worked with. So anyways, developed by Joseph and Harry, so they combined to name the model Joe Hari. Anyways, I think that's enough details in the background. Here is how the model works. If you happen to be by a computer, Google Jahari's window so you can see what I'm talking about. But I'll try to explain this to you the best I can. So Jahari's window, it essentially tells us four things that are true about each and every one of us. So if you imagine a window, a four-paned window, right? There's four boxes in that window, and each box represents something that is true about each and every one of us. So I'll walk through this. The first box is what we call the open box. These are things that I know about myself and you know it about me as well. Hence why it's the open box. We can both see this. All right, an example of this is obviously my name is Ethan. That's something we both know. Um, You know, I, I do this podcast with my dad and partner in this business, which you know I have been told before that I look like the less athletic version of Aaron Rodgers, which, you know, that is what it is, but I suppose that is something I'm now aware of, and others seem to be aware of that as well. So anyways, the open box, things we're both aware of about ourselves. Uh, The next box is what we would call the hidden box. These are things that I know about myself, but you don't know about me. In other words, these are things that I know about myself, but you can't see in me. So here's some examples of this. Just kidding. I'm not going to give you any examples because the stuff that are in the hidden box, they're private. I would like to keep it that way. So anyways, moving on. The next box is what we might call the, the unknown box. This is the box that represents maybe the subconscious, you know, things that are just kind of in that God only knows space. These are things that I can't see about myself, but other people can't see it about me either. All right? It's the it's the unknown box. Now, the fourth and final box of this Jahari's window is really the crux of what I'm trying to get at today. And this is what we call the growth opportunity box. It's also been called the blind box, but I like to call it the growth opportunity box. These are things that I don't know about myself that other people can see in me. This is the way that I show up 
and I impact those around me that I'm not aware of. Now, can you imagine for yourself that it's true that there are just ways that you show up and ways you impact those around you that you just really aren't aware of? Hopefully, all of us have had an experience of getting some you know, feedback about a way that we were impacting somebody, maybe negatively or positively, that we had no idea we were doing that, right? For instance, I am not always a great listener. I tend to be rushing the conversation along. I might try to finish the sentence for you. I wasn't actually aware of that for a while, that I was having a negative impact on conversations with my colleagues where they felt that I wasn't really listening to them very well or very closely, all right? So this is the growth opportunity box. Again, the impact that we have on others that we're not aware of. This box represents growth opportunities for us and specifically growth opportunities for the leaders, managers that we partner with. My belief, my philosophy, and really the philosophy we, we have at the core of what we do with Nash Consulting is that you can't be an effective leader if you don't have an eye on growth and development, if you don't have an eye on your blind spots. I really think it's going to be hard for you to be effective in helping your people grow, develop, perform, advance, if you're not focused on growing yourself, developing yourself, advancing your own skills, behaviors, and finding ways to have more positive impacts on those that you lead. Think about that for a second. Imagine somebody that their job is to help lead and manage other people, but they're not at all trying to uncover their blind spots and grow. To me, that's analogous to a teacher who's responsible for educating their students, yet they don't value their own education. Or a doctor who's responsible for giving you recommendations on your health, who doesn't value their own health. All right, it just doesn't make sense. A leader that's not grown and developing is a leader that gets stuck. And it's a leader that, throughout time, is going to start to have a negative impact on those around them. If you, have, as a leader, want to perform at a high level in terms of your ability to manage your workforce, to help your workforce grow and develop, you got to work on your blind spots. In my experience, and talking to my colleagues, is that the leaders that develop this attitude of a growth mindset and are dedicated to the project of uncovering their blind spots tend to have employees with higher satisfaction, higher morale, and they get a higher level of support from them. A growth mindset is a term that probably we've all heard before, and it's really just the belief that people, including oneself, can change their talents, their abilities, right? That they can uncover their blind spots and improve in those areas. And conversely, those with a fixed mindset have the attitude that people can't really change their talents, abilities, and so on. But at this point, there, there's decades of research, and I would look into the work done by Carol Dweck of Stanford University who coined this phrase, growth mindset, but there's decades of research that have found that those with a growth mindset are really just more, more mentally primed to approach life, to take on the challenges, right? To take advantage of feedback, to adopt the most effective problem-solving strategies, and, and just be effortful and persistent in, in seeking to accomplish goals. So growth mindset is a thing. And not to beat this dead horse too much more, but I really believe that you, us as leaders, need to have a growth mindset to be effective with the people that we lead. Our job is to lead these people. But you got to lead yourself first. And you can do so by trying to understand what you don't know. You don't know 
what you don't know, and that's really important to hold on to. So, on a practical level here, how do we work on these blind spots? How do we start the process of uncovering what we need to work on to figure out where we can make adjustments to be more effective in our lives, in the workplace, with leading others? On a meta level, I think the first step in being open to seeing your blind spots and being receptive of something that might not be flattering about yourself that you discover is practicing self-compassion. I know that sounds a little touchy-feely, and by the way, I uh, did a whole episode on self-compassion and a growth mindset, and that is episode 36, Developing a Growth Mindset Through Self-Compassion. I will link to that episode in the show notes, but check it out if you want some more deets on that and my thoughts on the subject. But self-compassion is really the meta, meta skill in being open to growth and development, right? Research on self-compassion has indicated that developing the skill of self-compassion leads people to embrace that growth mindset that I'm talking about. And I think we can intuit why that might be. Se- self-compassion is the ability to say, you know what? I'm not perfect. I never said I was, but I can be kind enough to myself to not beat myself up about this and recognize that setbacks and failures are a part of the human experience and that I can improve. Self-compassion and practicing that skill gives you the capacity to wrap your head around the fact that you have things to work on. And that's okay. A lot of research on self-compassion, like I said, um, a lot of it is done by Kristen Neff, and you can check out her work Uh, Just give her a quick Google. Lots of good stuff there. But one thing they found in the research is that when someone's level of self-compassion grew, so did their overall motivation and engagement in their work. And that's research done by the University of British Columbia. So this is is really great news. It means that practicing self-compassion can trigger that growth mindset. Right? And again, research has found that those who embrace the growth mindset are more effective, they reach their goals more often, and pro tip for managers, are better able to help make those around them more effective. But there's the place to start with growth and development, is do you have an opportunity for growth and development in the area of self-compassion? Consider it. Now, how else might you work on those blind spots? Now that you're in the, in the mindset of, okay, I'm practicing self-compassion. I may find out things that are hard, may find out things that are painful and are hard to swallow, but I'm practicing this skill. I'm being kind to myself. I'm recognizing that nobody's perfect and nor am I. Now, what can I do to understand my areas of opportunity for growth and development? As a manager and leader, the obvious thing that you can do, in my opinion, is ask for and be open to feedback. Now, that's one of our top 15 management skills. And for more on the top 15 management skills, check out episodes 38 through 44. We did a whole series on the top 15 management skills. But being open and asking for feedback is the place to start. Make it a regular part of your one-on-ones with your employees to ask for feedback. Hey, where are areas that I might be showing up that are unhelpful? What areas do you think I could improve in? Right? There's lots of great questions that you can ask to get some feedback on what you don't know. Again, we don't know what we don't know. And a great way to figure that out is talk to the people that see you show up on a day-to-day basis. Talk to the people that you're responsible for leading, managing, developing, growing. Ask for feedback. Again, these can be this can be informal feedback done in your regular scheduled one-on-ones. We have an episode all about running really effective and great one-on-one meetings. That's episode 13. I will link to that in the show note, uh, the show notes as well, along with those episodes on the top 15 management skills. 
and another avenue for getting that feedback to work on covering your blind spots is consider engaging in a what we call a 360 degree review process. This is something that Nash Consulting does often with our clients, but this is where a third party comes in and has an interview with those people that you lead or those people that you collaborate with. And um, this is an opportunity to get some objective feedback on how people would like to see you improve, where your areas of opportunity are, and what are your strengths. Let's remember here that your blind spots could be areas of opportunity that you should be growing in, but also it could be uncovering your strengths and abilities and positive attributes that you were unaware of, that you can now lean into and double down on to be more effective. So doing a 360 degree review process is really helpful for uncovering those blind spots. There's also other tools out there, such as one that I've recently used, which is um, a type of emotional IQ assessment. The one I did is specifically called EQ360 or Leadership EQ360. I got some really good information on you know where I shine in my emotional IQ skills and those emotional IQ skills that I should work on developing more to be more effective. All right, so there are those are a few ideas of how you can go about uncovering your blind spots. But by the way, and this is probably obvious, but I like to say the obvious things anyways, and that's that if you're asking for feedback and you're doing 360 reviews and you're doing maybe a, a sort of emotional IQ assessment, none of that stuff is going to matter unless you have the mindset of, I have things to work on. We are never done growing as human beings. And if you can accept that and you can recognize that working on those blind spots is going to make you way more effective as a manager, leader, spouse, partner, parent, friend, whatever. If you can recognize that, that's going to be a really, really powerful mindset as you go throughout your day-to-day -day interactions with those around you. But the key is you have to be open to the fact that you don't know what you don't know. Now, of course, other tools and tactics for working on those blind spots might be more internally focused. It might not be getting feedback, but it's being committed to the project of learning, right? Maybe that's through good reading, writing, journaling, conversations, therapy sessions, whatever. But it's looking for ways to grow and develop. A couple of my favorite books that has, that has really helped me grow and develop and uncover my blind spots as a leader are, the first one is called First Break All the Rules. We've talked about this book a lot on this podcast. And it essentially outlines the behaviors of leaders that manage teams that are highly productive and are highly successful with high morale and high engagement. By reading this book, and I, and I probably review it at least a couple times a year, I'm able to find areas that I can improve in in my ability to manage effectively. Again, just good reading can lead you to some pretty solid conclusions. Now, the other book is a li little bit more abstract, and that's called Awareness. And it's really more of an exploration of our minds and the stories that we end up telling ourselves that may or may not be reality. It's about gaining awareness of our internal processes and how that might be contributing to our behaviors and our outlook on life and therefore our ability to live and lead well in the world. So there's a couple of my favorite books for that's helped me grow and develop as a leader and just as a human being. Again, that's First Break All the Rules and Awareness. I will link to both of those in the show notes. All right, folks, there's just a quick shop talk about personal growth, Jahari's window, and why that concept is so important for being an effective leader and manager. Now, uh... I don't know how to end this, so I'll just say go forth and do great things and work on 
uncovering those blind spots. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next time.